Hey, what is up guys? I'm back and I'm here to show you something I got a couple of weeks ago um, and it is the EHX Super Switcher. Uh, what is it? It is a loop switcher, uh, not to be confused with a looper pedal. Uh, I've also got one of those. Uh, looper pedal would be something where you can play a riff, record it, play it back to be able to play over it. Uh, whereas a loop switcher can be used for a couple of different things. Uh, the EHX one specifically is a programmable one. Uh, why would you want this? Uh, there's a couple of reasons. If it's not a programmable one, usually it's just to kind of get all your controls front and center on your pedal board. Um, programmable is more for what I wanted to do. Quick sample of what you can do with it, how it works. Uh, how I have it set up. Uh, if you've got a lot of effects and you want to be able to switch between combinations quickly with one press of a button, you might want to look into a programmable one. Uh, but essentially what this is, is, and you'll see it in a minute, is a big pedal with a bunch of foot switches and on the back, and I'll show you the back as well later, all of them, basically each pedal that you want to use or multiple pedals, I'll go into that as well. Uh, you're going to be plugging into an input and output of a channel on uh, your loop switcher. Um, and uh, basically, you run your guitar through it, all your pedals are hooked in. It takes a lot of cables, just side note, uh, if you guys want to get into this, it's going to take a lot of cables. Uh, because each pedal needs an input output that goes into the loop switcher. Um, or you can chain pedals together in the same loop if you use two pedals always in combination with each other. Um, but yeah, the other thing that's really, really nice and kind of sold me on the Super Switcher, one, the price, uh, it's about $500 Canadian, give or take, uh, that is compared to the closest one that I could find that had also eight, uh, and it's got eight, by the way, uh, eight loops, uh, the closest one I could find that also had eight loops would be something like the Boss ES8, it's got a lot more features, granted, but it's also double the price. It's $999.99 Canadian, as opposed to the $500 of the EHX, which is potentially more or less why I went with the EHX. Um, the other really nice thing about, and I think the Boss one, I think most of them do this, to be honest with you, but the EHX does it and it works well. Uh, you can also, if your amp has uh, a reverb built in uh, with a foot switch, um, or a channel foot switch, uh, you can plug those into control one and control two on the super switcher. I'll show you guys again later. And, uh, you can use it to control your amp features. Um, so for example, and I'm going to switch cams now. Um, the sound quality is not what I'm going for here. This is going to just be a quick cell phone video. It's the easiest way for me to film this without a big setup. I just wanted to share this with you guys today. Uh, and show you the kind of stuff you can do with it. So uh, ignore the sound quality. This is really just for the functionality of the product. So I'm going to switch cameras now and we'll be right back. All right, what's up guys? We are back. We switched to my cell phone camera. Again, the sound quality is probably not the best, but that is not the point of this video. Uh, this is really to show you guys the product and what is the product. Like I was saying, the super switcher right here. I'm going to be pointing with my foot a lot. Uh, hopefully you guys don't mind. If you do, I don't care. One thing I forgot to mention and why you might also want to use uh, some kind of a loop switcher. Uh, what the loop switcher also permits you to do is make every single pedal uh, that you want to use true bypass. Uh, because they're all plugged into the eight possible loops. Uh, right now, nothing, none of the loops are on. So I am bypassing absolutely every single pedal, except the ones that are directly plugged. I've got the guitar going into the wall, going into the input, and I've also got the output going through my looper, and then to the amp. So those are both, I believe, true bypass, so I think most of my pedals are true bypass, so it doesn't really matter for me. Uh, but this might also be a reason to get a loop switcher if you have a noisy pedal that is not true bypass, but you do love and you do want to use. Uh, so again, uh, super switcher, eight loops. So buttons one through four, five through eight up here. 
Uh, these are eight presets. They can also be used to individually turn on the loops uh, one through eight. You've got a bank up and up and down. Uh, if you guys have ever used a multi-effect with multiple banks, same principle. Right now I'm on bank 02 with none of the patches selected, which is just bypassing everything and giving you the clean sound. Uh, preset button here. Uh, right now I am in preset mode, so if I press 1, the light is on, meaning I am in preset mode. And you, I'll get to these up here that are lit up green uh, in a second. Just turn this back off for now. Uh, tap tempo, if you will have pedals that use tap tempo uh, and you don't want to have to tap individual pedals, uh, you can store in a patch a tempo and every pedal you can hook up to it will just get that tempo if the pedal allows it. Uh, there's one tap out. I don't know how you'd pipe it to multiple pedals. I'm not actually using it. The only one I use the tap tempo on is the Capistan and it's up here and I will just set it. Uh, tap tempo preset, we went over that. Tuner, uh, what the tuner does is it'll mute everything and it'll send the input to your tuner. Here I have my Boss TU3 chromatic tuner. Let me just tune up, this strat does not stay tuned very well. Uh, the tuner button will work even if you don't have a tuner plugged in, just by the way, so it's kind of a convenient mute switch as well. Uh, and we also have, like I was saying before, Control 1 and Control 2. What these do is if you plug stuff into them, uh, it'll let you control your amp. So for me, Control 2 is uh, the amp channel. My amp doesn't have reverb, nothing's in Control 1. Uh, the last button here is a boost. So if we engage it, with a knob to control how much boost you want. That can be turned on or off, or it can be saved in a patch individually as well. So if you press one and you want the boost to be on, it'll come on when you press one. Uh, lastly, the green lights up here are also actually buttons and they also represent loops one through eight, plus PC, plus CC. I'm not using PC or CC. Those involve using MIDI. Uh, nothing's plugged into the MIDI ports. I don't want to use MIDI, uh, but it is also a possibility. Uh, so what this is telling me is that patch one has loop three and five enabled. What are those? Uh, well, loop three is the Capistan. Loop five is my reverb. So... Capistan is set to a very uh, mild echo right now. Uh, but what does? why would you want a super switcher? Well, for example, uh, let's say you are playing yourself some Opeth and uh, you want to go from a clean with reverb and delay uh, into, and this, sorry, it's gonna be a bit noisy. Uh, and then you want to switch to control 2 is lit up. You'll notice my amp uh, is also now on the modern channel uh, And I've still got the Capistan engaged and it also threw in the tube screamer Let me just unmute this and show you guys And then you want to go back to your clean for the uh, main riff for example Can't play today and then say for the uh you want to temporarily throw in a chorus and then go back to your full clean go back to your distorted maybe for the solo you also want to throw a phaser on Also just want uh, just pure dirt and the TS9 but no other effects. Uh, and then let's say you can 
have multiple banks. So I've got here just pure clean, which is kind of redundant because just pressing any of the presets on and off will go to full clean. So there you go, that's just like a quick example. Uh, how would you set this up? Let's go to a patch that's got absolutely nothing. So let's say five, I don't think I've touched five yet. So five by default is, the default is just your L1 is on. Uh, so I don't know, let's say for example, uh, the first patch we want, we don't want the phaser. So we can press that green light, it'll turn it off. Uh, let's say we want the Capistan and we want a flanger. So that'll be our clean. And then let's say patch two, we don't want that phaser again. Uh, let's say we want this to be the distorted channel. So we'll press the control two. Uh, we want the TS9 to be on as well. And uh, yeah, that'll be our distorted channel. So we can go back to one, which is again, just clean with our flanger and with uh, the capistan, and then go back. Uh, say we find that a bit dull and we want to add some reverb, we can just press five. Now let's say we don't like the reverb, we can take that off by pressing it again. Uh, the last thing I want to show you guys quickly is uh, say you are messing around with stuff, you can press this preset and now what happens is every pedal is just turning on a loop. So 7 would be the Pharaoh right now with the TS9. I believe you can also then, uh, let's say you want to go to three, uh, go into that and uh, let's just go uh, like we were doing. So let's put on what we had, turn that off. No, actually I don't like the Pharaoh. Let's go with the Dwarfcraft Necromancer. If you hold the preset, I believe, it will save. As you can see. And I can show you guys, let's put the boost on that, go back, come back, the boost is still on. And the boost, like I said, you can control. So there you go, that's just a super quick overview of the kind of stuff you can do with the Super Switcher. Alright, what is up guys? Um... I'll be honest with you guys, I totally bitched out. I just don't feel like unplugging everything and having to plug everything back in. It would be a super hassle. So what's the next best thing is I just found a high res ish picture of the thing online and I'm going to be using that to explain the functionality that's left. Uh, you can uh, see my mouse cursor. So I'm going to be using that to point my cameras over the top of uh, the uh, the, the super switcher, you don't really need to see that. You've already seen it. Uh, we can go over quick again. You can see the foot switches one through four and then five through eight, the up and down bank, the boost level knob. Uh, one I didn't explain to you guys is the value knob. You just kind of use it to switch through your banks if you don't want to use the up and down uh, and all that. And it is a push. So I think you like scroll to what you want and you push it in. I've never used it. I don't think I would ever use it. Uh, what I actually did want to show you guys, however, is the back of the unit. Uh, it looks overly complicated, obviously, um, but we'll go over it super quick and it's really not that bad. Uh, you got your 9 volts in. Uh, it does say 200 MA, uh, but even their site says as long as it gets 150, it's fine. Mine is currently being powered by a DC brick by MXR, which every single 9 volt is 150. 
and uh, honestly I've noticed no difference, no changes. They do say if ever you do something like I did and it starts behaving a bit weirdly, maybe stop and plug it directly into the wall. Um, it, but like I say, your mileage may vary up to you guys to do what you feel like doing. Uh, I wanted to risk it just to not have to plug another thing into the wall. Uh, but yeah, there you go, nine volt in, you've got your MIDI in and out, which I'm not using, nothing's plugged into it. This is what you would use to plug into a MIDI controller or your computer or whatever you're using to send MIDI commands uh, to the switcher. I don't do it, I can't comment on it. Uh, you got the main in, you've got your tuner out, uh, which this, you put the cable in here into the in of your tuner. You don't need to use the out of the tuner. You're basically just using the unit to, uh, when you press on tuner, it cuts all the other loops and just sends to the tuner. You tune, you turn it back off, and you keep going. Uh, so main in, like I said, and then you've got your loops. So channel one, loop one send and return, two, send, return, three, send, return, four, five, all the same. You've got one here that is the very important loop. Um, I'll explain that in a second. It's not labeled as one through eight. It is just a send and return. I'll get to that in a second. You've got your channel six, send, return, channel seven, send, mono send, stereo return, and if you want to use it, you've got channel 8, which is left and right send, left and right return. Uh, you then have stereo out, and you've got your tap right here if you want to use it. This is what I was saying, there's one tap out. I don't know how or if you can even pipe that to multiple pedals. I assume so, I just can't explain it, I don't use it. And then you've got your control 1 and 2 uh, that you can use for various things. I use it, like I say, control two is to switch my amp channel. All right, so what I wanted to show you guys today is uh, they will sell this to you and list it as being a eight channel with one quote unquote always on loop, which is the one right here that's just labeled with send and return. Uh, what you would use this loop for? Uh, example, if you've got a volume pedal, you probably always want that to be on, uh, you'd plug that in there. If, uh, say, you always, always had reverb on, you would put that in there. Uh, it's basically an always on loop. What it can also be used for is uh, if your amp has a effects loop. Uh, and this is what I was saying, they list it and they explain it as five channels effects loop, and then these three, six, seven, and eight, would be in your effects loop if you want to use the send and return for the effects loop here. Um, what one of my friends, and I will give him credit here, so Justin is the one who, my good friend Justin from New York, showed me and explained to me that basically what you have here is not really five in front, three in the loop. You have to see this as you've got two sections of loops, if you will, uh, a block of five and a block of three. It doesn't matter which one you want in the effects loop, you just wire your stuff in a little bit differently. Uh, I have five pedals right now that are in the effects loop and I have three that are in front. Uh, what's in front, um, excluding the stuff that's not even going through the switcher, uh, what I have in front is all my TS9, uh, which like I say is in loop five, uh, loop six, sorry, my bad, loop six is the TS9, loop seven is my classic fuzzes that are all in series, I only turn one of them on depending on what I want to do, uh, so loop six is the doom bloom, the pharaoh fuzz, and a big muff that's hidden inside of my board, and then loop eight, which I'm using all of these as mono, by the way. Uh, loop eight is my super high gain fuzz, so the Dwarfcraft Necromancer that you heard a little bit there, and also the uh, Behringer Super Fuzz, uh, which is, again, hidden inside the board. Uh, I turn one or the other on, depending on what I feel like that day, but all my pedals are powered, all my pedals are accessible. Uh, and then in front, like I was going over quickly, I've got channel one is the phaser, Channel 2 is my chorus, channel 3 is the delay, 
channel four is a phaser, channel five is the uh, reverb, uh, Holy Grail Nano from EHX, which again is hidden inside. Um, how do you flip this? Uh, it's super simple and it's kind of weird and you just kind of have to think about it because they won't tell you this. Uh, I've not seen anywhere that explain this, which is also kind of why I wanted to make this video uh, semi quickly. Again, I'm babbling way too much, but um, my guitar goes guitar to the wall. The wall then goes into the return right here. So my guitar is going through the return and then channel six, seven, and eight, which are my in front of the amp. Uh, the left out, uh, I didn't mention this either, but if you want to use these in mono, just use the left. So channel seven, left, left, channel eight, left, left, out, left. That goes into the looper and then to my amp. Uh, my effects loop on the amp, it goes through. Uh, the send goes into the main in. The uh, return goes into the send here, and there you go. We just basically flipped it so that you've got three pedals in front and five in the loop. Uh, you saw it there, it works fine. I have tried, just for the hell of it, to put like a delay in front uh, and it sounds like crap. Um, doing it this way, it sounds exactly because it is. Uh, like the delay is in the effects loop, which to me, that's where it should go. Again, your mileage may vary. Some people prefer to put effects in incorrect orders. There's no real correct order. Uh, but there you go. This was just my semi long-winded, uh, I wish it was quick video about the super switcher. The other thing, the last thing I will mention to you guys is that all these switches are uh, clickless. Uh, you probably didn't hear it, but they are clickless switches. You press it in, it turns it on. You, there's no loud click. There's no nothing like that. Um, so if you guys are like me and you like to use a lot of effects, but you don't like having to... Um, like before I got this, what I would do is if I was playing Opeth, I'd start playing the main riff and then I'd kind of have to pause, press like three pedals off, turn two more pedals on do the heavy riff, and okay, it's time for the clean again, okay, stop playing, turn two effects off, turn three back on, and then just use the chorus on and off between the two parts. It's just a pain in the ass. This just makes everything so much simpler. Uh, it is a bit pricey, like I said, this thing retails for 500 bucks Canadian. Uh, it's probably like 300 bucks US. Um, if you're tired and you just want to invest in something that'll let you program your effects and use them and enjoy playing guitar a lot more because you don't have to tap dance, consider the Super Switcher. Uh, again, if you have less pedals, there are also options from Boss. They make an ES3, which only has, I think, three loops. They make an ES5 that has five, and they make the ES8 that has eight, but then you're paying a lot more. There you go, that's it. I'm gonna shut up now and let you guys get back to enjoying your day. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, hopefully this helped someone. If you have any questions, send them my way. I will answer to the best of my knowledge.